Hey and welcome to Sekiro the Ultimate Guide. Now if this is your first time watching any of these videos then I'd ask for a minute or so of your time just so I can explain how to use this guide and what it's about. Essentially this guide is entirely complete and it will help you get a full platinum for Sekiro. It covers all NPC quests that are relevant, all items, a best path through the game and also specifically strategies to get you through the game with the path of least resistance. Remember that this guide is supposed to be used as a full guide but you, could, you can use it for specific areas if you need to but if you're confused about how you know we are at a certain point or doing a certain thing, chances are the answer is in a previous episode. When it comes to boss battles, we really only show you the easiest method that we could find based on our perspective. If you want to fight the boss differently, it's up to you in this case to find a different and harder strategy. Now, if you have a good tip or have a question, leave them in the comments and I'll add them to a pinned post. That way this guide can constantly get better or more efficient. So if you have a question, check the pinned post first. If you do have a tip, please leave a timestamp so I can find the bit that you're talking about. Also, please bear in mind that this guide is taking me literally hundreds of hours to make, so if you enjoyed the video, the least you could do is give it a like. If you really enjoyed it, perhaps give us a sub! And if you really, really enjoyed it, you can support the channel on our Patreon if you're feeling generous, or perhaps sub to us on our Twitch, that's another good option. Now on to the guide. Hey guys, and welcome back to Sekiro, the ultimate guide, and today it is Ashina part two because you have to go back to it and it's like changed up or whatever and then there's also an Ashina part three believe it or not but the part two is shorter than part one and part three is shorter than part two so you don't need to worry about it too much so is this when it's been raided yeah so because of that you have to go to the abandoned dungeon All entrance your idols are cut off and you have to go rediscover them and yeah but it's basically fine because so eavesdrop and then you can backstab this fellow. Now, um, there's like a, you'll see them coming up in a second. There's like these enemies with a hat. You want to equip the. They look like Shredder. Yeah, they do look like Shredder. You want to equip the uh, divine. You'll see it after this. So for this point, get the shurikens out, and you. So I mean, you could just like run up and like wail, but you do want to get rid of the the wolves first or the dogs, whatever they are. You can run up. Backstab the bell dude and then whirlwind slash will probably one shot the mutts. I mean, yeah, you could probably do that as well. If you want to use something other than the axe, <laughs> you could maybe throw in a whirlwind slash. Just saying, or a it's an draw. option. That's what these skills are there for. Although a lot of them are just heavily outclassed by the axe, by the strength build. So, uh, so ring you, his bell. Yeah. So if you do that, it, it means that you don't need to fight him. Uh, the thing is, is you can literally just run past him anyway. So there's also that. Bear that in mind, you can literally just repel up here and he can't so, get you. Put on the Divine Abduction. For some reason, why are you using Divine Abduction? Is uh, it good against these Shredder dudes? It's good against these guys specifically because okay. they're like way harder than normal enemies, but this just lets you like backstab them. Um, oh, okay. So they, lo they lost aggro. <laughs> It just puts them immediately in, like backstab, yeah. so it's, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, so you, is that two charges you have to use to do it? No, just, just the just one. one. I, fu I fucked up the backstab the first time. Okay. Yeah. So now we can't go in through the usual methods. This is The uh, drawbridge has been raised, but we have Mibu breathing technique. Yeah, so now If you've killed this. Corrupted Monk. Which, this won't happen before Corrupted Monk? Nah, it won't, so. Okay. Well, once you kill Corrupted Monk, this then happens. So that's right. like the... The trigger point. Aye, aye. So there's like a couple items down here, and um, but we're just gonna swim and get them. There's also like a carp coming up. Uh, so this area as a whole, I mean, it's, it's honestly it's it's not really that difficult. But this um, what was it going? What more tracks are here? Yeah, it's right. So it's covered in the lone shadow enemies. Now these guys are like particularly difficult. So I would honestly just recommend you can just avoid most of them. It's uh, this guy here, right? You'll see him like kind of yeah, drop down. Purple ninjas. Yeah. So what we're doing here is we're just like breaking the guy's aggro. So when you jump up, you like jump down onto that roof. Just wait for him to like, like you hide behind a wall, like the roof or whatever. So he he will break his um his like interest in you, and then once he's like not interested, you can like do the. I do actually get the drop attack on him here, unbelievably. With some uh, sliding shenanigans. Oh, nicely done. Yeah. Nicely done. Most of the time, he won't be directly under that Defies little Defies the laws of physics, but nicely done. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, what we're going to do... Vile hands, is that not what these guys are called? 
Nah. Something. Nah, I think they're called vile hands because they like poison you. Just lone shadow. I think one of them's called Lone Shadow Vile Hand. I might be. I think I might be the boss that's in like the, the one. That might be it. where I'm getting it from. So there's a particularly hard boss in this area. This is like another kind of Genichiro level boss. Um, so we're just uh, went to that bonfire there as well because that's like we're just trying to unlock the bonfires as we go along, and that one's like the closest one. So you might as well get it, despite the fact like you don't really need it. You're never really gonna go there. So, we need to do like another kind of stealthing onto the roof thing like we did the first time we come to Ishina. Uh, we you, just get the oil on You the do stairs. not want to go up the main staircase. Uh, there are a couple of shredder looking dudes and one guy with a big flamethrower or something. No, no, that's uh, the next time you come. Is that the next time? Yeah, yeah. It only gets raided once. Okay. No, I guess it gets, well, it gets raided once and it gets apparently like worse raided later on. Oh. They, they just don't stop raiding. Reinforcements as if they needed it, they won. So, there's a very specific way you want to take this area. Um, again, this is one of those times when I spent many an hour working out the optimal route here. So, again, like the video, please. But we're just gonna wait for this guy to kill these guys, might as well. And then you can get the uh, drop attack on him, get the last laugh. Now, you can make bets for your friends if the red guy manages to kill the weaker enemies. Uh, they never managed to kill the red they're, guy. They're never going to win. That guy is just hitting them with like an endless string of combos. But if uh, if they do manage to beat the red guy, tell me. Okay, I, I want to know what the percentage of that this is. This isn't like a Tarkov, uh, not Tarkov, Tarkus Iron Golem thing. So now we're, there's like, this is like a specific thing. There's a bunch of those like rat enemies on the room. I say rat, like they get the stupid guys with the hat. Rice so, hats. So we're going to use the... Um, the mountain echo right so if you whistle they're like hanging off the other edge but you want to do this right here and you also don't want to go onto the other side of the roof you want to like stay as much on like the side that you're on just now uh just because you don't want to aggro them aggro them when you get onto the roof because see once these guys aggro on you is such a pain in the ass so you can just use the finger whistle to like bait these guys to the edge Sometimes, like, most of the time they will just come to the edge. I don't know why he wasn't doing it. He was already there. He decided that was far enough. But then you managed to convince him otherwise. If anything, it's kind of good that that footage was there so you can see that they will come to the edge. So, you can just jump down here. And, to be fair, this is quite similar. Like, the first time you just take the gatch and sugar and you go up a specific route. But, at the same time, it's just worth knowing because... Man, without doing it that way, it was such a fucking hassle. So I, I don't know why this guy is really fucking getting He's the beat down, rinsing you out. <laughs> don't he know what was like going on there. Seventy-five percent of your health there. So he's earning his rice bowl tonight. He fucking is. <laughs> Not that he's getting it; he's dead. No. <laughs> but he tried. So catch and sugar on. I wonder oh, if they have corner. Uncle Ben's in, in Ashina. I fucking hope not. Uncle Ben's is dog shit, man. <laughs> like the video if you hate Uncle Ben's rice. Right? Uncle Ishin's rice <laughs> instead. <laughs> so, go up the route that we just took there. This cuts out a whole bunch of these rat enemies. You're gatching sugar because so the ones later on won't see you. And there's also uh, another thing as well. If you've taken the gatching sugar, you can do this. Which is quite nice. These guys are the best ninjas in the game. Just so you know. But they're not that good. Clearly not. So, there you go. That's like killing two birds with one stone. Now, another thing is, though, is you might have saw walking up to the roof here, there was, like, a big plank bridge. See that first initial guy that I, like, juked? That plank bridge just leads up to this bit of the roof <laughs> anyway. <laughs> you just bolt past the other four vile hats. You're just like, yeah, fuck it. Yeah, so this is, like, another thing. This is, like, a, that part of the roof is always so ridiculously awful. We're it's, just gonna run past every time. It's easy if you... Get this idol and then just turn around because they're all facing the other way. Yeah, it's easy in that case. Take a Gatchin sugar, uh, pop the dogs with shuriken. But and I don't know why you want to kill them. Oh, I guess if you want to like farm a little bit because they do give you a yeah. lot of experience. So we need to go through uh, Ashina Castle again. And this time it is like a little bit more difficult, I guess. But the good thing is, is you're able to get the backstab on the Ashina guy. Saves on development costs if we make them go through the same place. Exactly. <laughs> but I don't really mind it. I like revisiting it. Anyway. That's no, good. I like this. So, here's how you get the drop attack on the ogre. You ledge grab, drop down, and then drop attack that way. 
It is so hard to do it by just jumping off the edge, but the drop attack lets you get it. So then all you need to do is equip the sparking axe and go to town on this guy. And that's it, that's just how you beat this guy. Um, as long as you get him on fire, you just beat him like the first uh, chained ogre. So bang, like you six set or seven fire. hits. You just hit him once. Uh, so after you've set him on fire twice, you need to wait for him to like kind of fully reset, quote unquote. You can't just immediately set him on fire a third time. Because he'll, as you can see, he goes on fire and then is like kind of unaffected by it for a little while. So it's the same as you. You have like a resistance meter, and when that fills out, you will be on fire for a period of the time. Aye. Same as like poison. He's essentially poisoned with flame at the moment. So you need to wait until that's finished, and then you can build more. Pretty much. But as you can see, it's like it really is as simple as that. Um, you're really not. It's the chained ogre. Challenge. You've fought twenty times harder by this point. Yeah, so, pretty much. I mean, the first time you come to the Chained Ogre, he can definitely lay the beat down on you, but this second uh, visit, it's just, you're just way over-equipped for him. So we're going to open up the shortcut, which leads to, like, the start of the castle. I mean, there's way less enemies and stuff to, like, take care of, so that's pretty good, but, you know, it's just a case of you have to go through the castle again. So this obviously lets us go to the back entrance, where our Sabi Maru and stuff was, and then we can open up that and then get the, uh, the old grave... Um, bonfire, etc. Now the thing is, is there's pretty much no new items in these areas, so you, you just don't really need to give a shit. Just run through them and grab the idols yeah. when you can. If you've put any skill points into the like passive uh, stealth bonuses from the same skill page as uh, Ichimonji, I think? Nah, it's, um, it? it's like the first one. Is it the first skill page yeah. that has it? Yeah, the suppressed presence, those ones. Yeah. yeah, you could just sprint through this and nobody will probably notice you at all. They're, so, they're such an effective, like, pairing of skill points if you get both of the suppressed presences. So the cool thing about the Sparking Axe is that it lets you just kind of one-shot a lot of enemies <laughs> as well because it just maxes out the posture meter, like, immediately. And you make your account of this guy as well, so... He was deader than dead as it was. You get such a brutal execution on those guys, it's actually ridiculous. So this bit is, like, annoying because it's, like, time-consuming. I mean, it's, it's again just one of those things where really you can just run up and spam the axe on all these enemies. There's a headless totally down here as well, isn't there? Is that uh, on the other pill? No, no, there is a headless here and we're going to take care of that just now. I think that's the second last headless and there's another Siege Memorial as well. So I w at this point I was just kind of experimenting to see if you're able to like use the finger whistle to like bait these guys over, but you can't. They're going to wail in on each other for a while and they're going to take a while until they die. Which is why, like, so here's the thing, if you can guarantee that you've not been seen you can run up and backstab the Lone Shadow, but most of the time, he will have seen you, but he'll just still be <laughs> aggroed on <laughs> that guy. <laughs> you went into that fight, you're like, whistled <laughs> immediately, you're like, hello, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're just gonna fang and blade the, uh... Yeah. Yeah. Fair. That's, honestly, that's like the most effective strategy for taking care of them. Like, see, so try to beat them legitimately, like, it's, it's such a fucking pain. Yeah, if you're not good at the game, then you can just use the fang and blade. Even if you are good at the game, it's still no, a fucking yeah, you pain. you can. You can. You can, like, Makira counter one of their kick attacks, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, you can, yeah. It's really funny. It's really stupid as well. <laughs> it just doesn't make any yeah. sense. But Jet Li. So, now we are going to do the underwater headless, and this is, like, the first time we've had to do an underwater headless. So what you want to do is take the Divine Confetti just now whilst you're outside of the water and when you jump in the water the buff will still stay on but you can't put the buff on whilst you're in the water. So yeah. just bear that in mind. Now honestly, it's actually easier fighting the Underwater Headless just because now anyway. the dash range that you have is insane. Yeah, so it's kind of hard to really explain because it just seems so self-explanatory. Just like dash around them using Circle wait until it does an attack and then halfway through the animation just do the dash r1 attack and then that's you now you you can if you're a bit ballsy do a dash r1 and then you can do a couple of other hits after that to kind of speed the process up and um, if you time it wrong you, you might take like a little bit of damage but ultimately i mean it's, it's just not a big the deal the only attacks you really need to watch out for is that like attack that he done before this one where he leaves like this cone of damage in front of himself and yeah. this one right here where he fires these little homing missiles uh you gotta avoid them because they'll follow you around for a little while after he casts it yeah and you'll get tethered like what just happened there but, yeah instantly but again this is just one of those enemies where you it's just 
taking your time's a pain in the ass. You just want it dead. Right? This is so, one of the easier headlesses in the yeah, game. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Now, when you fight, have to fight another underwater headless, it's quite annoying because there's two of them, and that makes things significantly harder. Isn't there a sea shaman down there as well? So nah, it's nah, it's just dead. Just both headless. It's just a headless and then like a, a admittedly a headless. less health, but like still a headless. Yeah. So we're just getting that item uh, around there. There's like some coin purses and shit in the middle. There's like an item over here. Me boo balloons. Yeah. Gotta get them me boo balloons. Can't not get them. I right, a fish. So now there's like an antidote up here, which I guess is like vaguely useful as an item. And then we can continue on. Uh, it's pretty much just, oh wait, no, I think there might be a boss down here. Maybe, can't quite remember. I think there's like a one of the uh, lone shadow type bosses. There is where all the monkeys are. Yeah, yeah, there is. I think you can backstab him. Uh, you can, and then uh, I mean you you'll see how easy it is. <laughs> nah, I I already know how easy it's going to be because I know what tool you're going to use immediately. But the good thing is and, now uh, everybody else knows what tool to use immediately. It's probably the sparking axe, isn't it? It's actually not. Oh, is it the non-sparking axe then? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the sparking axe. <laughs> yeah, I thought I thought it would be. Is that going to be the sparking axe, or it was going to be the one that spins up? Oh yeah, yeah. You can actually do the spin thing with the sparking axe, but it's just not worth it. Oh fair. The spin attack I thought was going to be like the game changer, but it's actually not. No, not enough posture damage or something. It, it just misses a lot of the time. Oh. <laughs> so. Unbelievably, this guy just doesn't see you until you like step into the into the hut. <laughs> aye, so you can just come right around behind him and just backstab him, and then, as ever, use an axe to just finish him off. R two, R one, R one, R one, R two. Yeah, just poised. Through. You R1, didn't even kick you. You kicked R1, over your R1. head. R one, R two, R one. Uh, yeah, so it is Lone Shadow, because he's Masanaga the Spear Bearer. He's not got a spear though, he's got a fucking sword. I know. That's some bad translation right there. What the are you talking about, Spear Bearer? So you want to definitely do him because he gave you a... Um, a prayer bead. Yeah, so obviously that's like a... And yellow gunpowder is there. But, you know, yeah, so, so some more upgrade material, which is obviously recommended. So now we can go uh, straight back to the antechamber and continue on with like the rest of the You're going upwards. castle. Uh, yeah, so now, now we're going upwards towards uh, the, the big bad boss, but there is still another, at least one more boss to do. In Ashina? Yeah, there's yeah. the uh, double boss over in the tutorial area, isn't there? Uh, no, no, that's not till later. In here, yeah. there's one more boss to do. So, we'll do the, the, the same backstab type. Now, I don't know if you remember, if you're watching the rest of the guide, so do this just now, by the way, kill her, but... Uh, if you don't open this door, the first time you come here, this door's locked and it's, um, yeah, pain in the ass. So you can use the finger whistle to bait those guys out and then you can, like, ledge kill them, which is, like... if you target them, the finger whistle, only they can hear it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that only works with uh, the, the upgraded finger whistle, specifically. Yeah, yeah. Is there, a, is there a finger whistle that has the delay on it or something like that? Uh... There might be. I can't. I can't remember. It's just never relevant. No, I know. None of the tools are ever relevant for no. the most part. <laughs> it's true. I like how this guy's just. Like, I'm totally fine watching you kill my buddy. Here, let me pull out my sword. The axe is also particularly good for taking care of these guys. Obnoxiously good. <laughs> yeah. Um. So there's oh, like another yeah. bone shadow. So you can use the finger whistle to do this. If you walk down, um, he starts. I think fighting with a night jar. I'm sure. Yeah. There are still night jar here. I think. Couldn't you... Yeah, he starts fighting with this guy, so if you use the finger whistle, it just, like, straight up baits him out, and then... I like the, the little slide. <laughs> so the thing is, as well, is that the night jars are actually weak to the fire, so the sparking axe just fucking kills him immediately. So for some reason, Ishin's just here, just chilling. chilling. Yeah. He's got a sake, who cares? Aye. Remember, you can, uh, get He's got an entire fucking urn of it behind him. Look at the size of that jug. It's huge. So you can give NPCs the various strengths you get during the game. Just gonna mention that like periodically. Whenever the NPCs show up, and uh, it'll expand their dialogue. Aye. Um, but there's only like I think there's only one of the dragon type sake or something like that, and 
you need to choose whose dialogue you want to hear. Yeah, you can't hear everybody's dialogue in one playthrough as far as I'm aware. But also, yeah. it's like super optional, doesn't give you anything, so it just literally doesn't matter. So we also picked up the Black just, Scroll. Just read it from the wiki, it's there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we picked up the Black Scroll just there, and I cannot remember what the fuck you need that for. But it is a key item, so we're picking it up. So we come to this idol, we should have... I think you can turn... Do you so we need one more prayer bead, which we get off this guy. So, there's a trick to beating this guy. If you just run in and attack him, you'll have to fight him and this Lone Shadow. But if you come in and sneak, you can quickly sneak in and kill him before the boss aggroes. But now what you do is, after that happens, you quit out the game, and then you quit back in. And you'll be outside the boss room, and the minion will be dead, and you can probably sneak around and backstab the boss, can't you? Correct. Oh. I wonder how you figured this out. It's almost like it's right in front of you once you start going, yeah, I'm just going to save scum this playthrough. <laughs> yeah. It's great, isn't it? It's pretty sick. Uh, admittedly, like, this guy is like... Hey, speedrunners do it, it's fine. Ah, exactly. <clears throat> Doesn't contribute to your game time, bro. So as you can see, he's just unaggroed now. You just run up and fucking backstab him. And then we use the classic method that you might not be aware of. The tried and true. <laughs> We use R2, R1 with a spark and axe the to kill the ones. Pride of the guide. The fix all solution. <laughs> the fang and blade. <laughs> so, this is just the equivalent of just like hyper leveling your vitality in like Dark Souls 1 or some shit. This is, this is, yeah, this is like a fucking 99 vit great hammer build. <laughs> yeah. Is what's going on right now. Pretty much. Then you get your last prayer bead. So, now you can level up before the boss. And, uh, so. The next boss that's coming up is legitimately challenging in all his forms, even with the axe. But again, we have like a kind of interesting technique, uh, should we say? That's Wait, kind of a is kind this of... not where the game can split? In this boss, you might you don't even have to fight him. So yeah, we should mention this in this particular playthrough of the guide. I will do the rest of the guide later uh, when it comes to defeating the next. So basically, you get a choice of bosses. You can either side with the boss that's coming up, that, spoiler alert, it's your dad, you can either side with Owl or you can uh, tell him to fuck off. If you tell him to fuck off, that continues the story in general, but if you side with Owl, then you need to fight Ishin. Well, then you need to fight Emma, everybody. Everybody. Like, uh, you end up, you end up like, he tells you to go kill a bunch of people. No, 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 you just fight Emma and then Ishin in the game. Is it just Emma and Ishin? Yeah. Oh, so you never get, right, okay, okay. But for now, in this part of the guide, we are just doing Owl. Now, lengthening the game for the platinum trophy. Pretty much. So, back up your save here if you want to come back and get the Shura ending. Because that's how you get the Shura ending. Uh, so on PC, yeah, you can do that. Yeah. No, you can upload your save on PS4 and just download that again. Upload it to your PlayStation Cloud if you've got PlayStation Plus and then you can download it. Actually, yeah, I think that and does then make sense. You can, you can back up here because when you talk to him at this point, that's when, like you make the choice to either continue the game or take the quick ending. So if you break the Iron Code, you continue the game, or if you you obey the Iron Code, he's like, okay then, then you kill Emma and Ishin, and then that's it, game over, that's the Shura Trophy gotten. So then you got the Shura Trophy, so then you can re-download your save before the boss, and then continue on with the game. But okay, time for the boss tactics. We're taking an Ongo Sugar, and what the main tactic is, is to just... So this is an absolute perfect run where I got him in this corner here, by the way, and you want to get him into a corner, that's very key. If you get him into your corner when he jumps back, he can't actually jump back with distance, and then you can just keep wailing on him like what you saw just there. Now, there is more footage of a less perfect run, just to make a point. I just wanted to show you the perfect run. And the reason for it is you kill... You take the, un the Ungo Sugar, you take the Aqua Sugar, you kill your dad immediately using the axe in, like, one combo, one or two combos. And then it allows you to have way more heals and flexibility for taking care of his second form. Now, if you were to do this legitimately, it would take a while to beat the first form. Um, and really what we're all about is like, just get the first form out of the way and then we can use all the resources to concentrate on the second form. You now, can also like, if you keep running wide arcs around to his right, a lot of his attacks just miss you. Yeah, yeah. That's another thing. He, he has some really funky hitboxes on his right side where it looks like they should hit and they don't. So you can just walk around. Like, that attack there, you can just run around behind them. But wide arcs is, like, the main thing. So this is actually a fairly unique technique for what we're doing for uh, specifically Owl. We're taking wide arcs to bait out these attacks, and when he does 
that attack, the, the big overhead lunge, we run in and we use the mortal draw attack on him. Now, this because is really good. Fuck load of damage, load of posture damage as well. Loads of range. And he's no longer recovering posture because his health is below half. Exactly. Oh, now, well, he's recovering. So, this little smoke done. bomb, you want to stay the fuck away from it because it'll take your healing away from your gourds. Um, now, really, the main attack that you want to bait out is the shuriken shuriken overhead chop attack. But if you can get a little bit more ballsy, you can just go in for whatever opening feels good. Like, you can use that one as an opening, despite the fact that you could maybe fuck it up and get caught in a smoke bomb, but... Oh, a warning. Do not use char Do not use charged attacks. He can Makiri counter you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't, yeah so, he's, don't yeah. use... See, when you're running around, just press R1. Don't... Don't hold it for the charge R1. Just now, the other good the thing one. about using the mortal draw is that it attacks through his guard, so always do an amount of chip damage to him. Um, I've seen an amount of guides that use the whirlwind slash over and over again, but that doesn't do enough damage, and you have to use it so much that it just leaves more margin for error. And that's something about the guides, where if you have a technique and it takes like 15 minutes to kill the boss if you fuck up on minute 13 it's infuriating but if you fuck up using these techniques it's fine because you've like you've only spent a couple of minutes doing one run so as you can see if you're able to emulate what we're doing there this is absolutely the easiest way of beating owl that like, was like four or five like both strikes of mortal draw hitting and that was him so if you can get four or five mortal draws in, which shouldn't, shouldn't be too difficult if you're just infinitely sprinting around them. So this is the less perfect footage. So I think I think it's very important to have both, uh, just to show you, honestly. So um, again, we're putting Nungo Sugar, Akko Sugar on. And, Ceremonial um, Tanto to refresh your emblems a little bit for phase two. Um, you should have enough healing at this point that the Ceremonial Tanto isn't a boon in any way. Yeah, yeah. So it's just a nothing if you use it free emblems so i'm using this corner here if we can bait out an attack can i get onto this side again the the jump back that he does it allows you like he can't maintain a lot of distance with it and that's kind of the thing like if you've got his back towards a wall the jump back is is fine like it's as you can see i'm, I'm not kind of getting into quite the Try corner he was Try but it's working pretty well. Like you don't even need to get him massively backed into a wall. Um, just to, as long as you're keeping that pressure on, you can just pound through his attacks using your hyper armor. Now, once you've taken one bar of health off him, he kind of goes into this kind of like mercy state. This allows you to heal up, put your buffs back on if you need to, because you, oh, he'll only start fighting you once you get close to him again. So you can use this as just a little breathing room. Um, and again, you know, when it comes to this stage, it's a different. Uh, technique for his second stage. You want to use the wide arcs, you put on the mortal draw, and you bait out specifically this attack. Now, the good thing is, is look how much damage. That was like a quarter of his health bar. With a mortal draw followed up by an R1. Not half bad. And that's because, so the mortal draw needs emblems, uh, or rather uses emblems, but if you don't have any emblems, it does do a weaker version of it, but it's still the weak version of it is incredibly powerful. And you staggered him with the second strike of that mortal draw and it wasn't even empowered. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um... <laughs> and then, of course, if you're constantly making distance, use the Tanto, use your healing guard, get your emblems back, and that's you got one use of an empowered mortal draw again. Exactly. Now, if you are doing this, just make sure you're baiting out, you know, this main attack here where you can definitely get a hit on that him. was half of his bar of posture right there. It's crazy. And like, one mortal draw. Like, it's so... See, when I found out this technique, I'm like, I have... This is, is solved. Like, this guy took me so long to beat initially. Like, so, so long, but when, that tough got, fight. when I got this technique done, bang, easy. That was the second hit of the mortal draw is what gave you that visceral. But yeah, he's like, he's a pretty tough boss if you're trying to fight him straight up without just doing this. Yeah. Like, if you're wanting to go, like, toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, he is tough. It requires some good reaction times. He's not got a lot. You can't really Makiri counter him in any way. Nah, and nah. Yeah, it's, he, he is a tough boss. He takes a lot of your tools away from you, and then he gets the Makiri counter. Absolutely, and he hits like a... <laughs> Fucking truck as well. He does, yeah. Because like one of the strikes that he hit you with there was one of his dashing like wide arcs. Yeah. He hit you with that and it took off two thirds of your health in one hit. So this is exactly why I'm always a big uh... advocate of cheesing. So <laughs> yeah, but specifically in the method of like if you can just annihilate the first phase, like the easiest method that's super quick. If you die during the second phase, it's nowhere near as annoying. 
So now we're going to wrap up a bunch of story elements we need to do. Just Gourd now. seeds, prayer beads. Uh, oh, um, your upgrade your attack and stuff like that. Damn it, I was going for Never. rhymes. I had the rhyme going with gold seeds and prayer beads, <laughs> and then, then you're just like, upgrade attack your attack. Attack needs. Attack needs, <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so we're... We, Kuro weeds. <laughs> we max out uh, or exhaust Emma's dialogue just there. Then we have to exhaust Kuro's dialogue. Um, essentially, all these story points are coming up. Um, so you keep talking to him, he'll give you like the, the diary thing, then he keeps talking and then I think you... You need, to, you need to smell the magic incense at some point and go on your spirit journey or some shit. Like yeah, that. I think so. I think it's quite funny the way the game works because it, it saves up a whole bunch of story elements. It's not like you have to, like, because you know how you have to like give them these items? You can just give them all at once and it just saves all the story elements and dialogue up in like one run. So now you need to ask Emma. Um, I thought we had to like. Right, is it either Emma or Ishi? So you need to come down to your eavesdrop. So that's like whatever. Um, and then we. Pretty sure I've already spoke to Ishi. No, uh, he asked you to talk to someone. I think he asked you to talk to Emma. Uh, so yeah, I, okay, so now like, we get now we get yeah, more. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Severance tome. And then, so that was speak to Emma, exhaust dialogue, speak to Kuro, exhaust dialogue, eavesdrop, speak to Emma, exhaust dialogue, <sighs> speak to Kuro, exhaust dialogue. It's, it's really quite annoying um, how much like back and forth you have to do here, but you have to do this specifically in order to... Um, then you smell the funky point. Yeah. Right? So to reiterate, speak to Emma, speak to Kuro, eavesdrop, speak to Emma, speak to Kuro, light the incense, Spirit journey. Yeah. That's, yeah. It, like, that only happens in like two parts of the game where you have to like dialogue spam and it's always in that fucking room. Yeah. So as it's right after Genichiro and then right after Owl. So now we have to speak to Emma again in private. Yeah, yeah. So there's, cause there's, like I said, there's like three endings. So this is like, yeah. If you just didn't do anything, you can only get the one ending, but now if you do this just now, it allows you to get the next ending. Now, I'm pretty sure the next part is speaking to Emma again. If you rest at this bonfire, she should be at the top of the stairs in front of you, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so then she moves. So it's not, if you've done this properly, she'll move up to the top of the stairs. I mean, if you're finding this hard to follow, just mash their dialogue until they're just repeating themselves and then just speak to them until she eventually moves. So then, I agree, Kuro can't die. And this ties in with the other child of rejuvenation, or whatever you want to call it. So you speak to her, and then she'll give you something, I think. A wee kiss on the cheek and a thank you. Aye. And you slap on the arse as you leave. <laughs> <laughs> Go get him, champ. <laughs> Smack. Um, you get like a, a diary or whatever. Right, yeah, so you speak yeah. to her, rest, she gives Tom you. Tom and then you max out her to dialogue. Take in some way. So then now we go to the old grave where she is. Max out her dialogue there. It's quite, it, there's just so much just go to a place, max out a dialogue. Like it's, it's not even really any gameplay. It's because you're not invested in the story. I mean, yeah, I this guess. This would be go to a place and story happens. But you're just like, go hit mash X, kill thing. <laughs> Well, Axe so. Fang and Blade. <laughs> if you could Fang and Blade your way through Emma's dialogue, you fucking would have. <laughs> You're correct, I absolutely would have. So you max, so you exhaust her dialogue, and then we need to go to the dilapidated temple and uh, max out some dialogue there. Is that with a sculptor? Aye. Yeah. Don't need the screwdriver this time. Just here for a wee, a wee, a wee cup of sake and a wee chat. <laughs> it's been a while. What the fuck do you know? How's, how's you and your screwdriver? <laughs> so we come around the back here and then we eavesdrop on Emma and the sculptor speaking. She's I like, kill the child. Go on and kill the boy. No, she doesn't. She, <laughs> she doesn't want him dead. No, I know, it? I know. Sculptor wants him dead, but... I have a feeling that the sculptor's you. Anyway, though. What, is it Bloodborne? I think so, yeah. Uh, I mean, it makes sense. There's a lot of blood. So if you've eavesdropped, you can ask about what you were heard. She'll be like, oh no, you heard, did you? And then she gives you the item that lets you go to the Hirata Estate Part 2, 
but we don't do that until way later on in the game because uh, you have to do another optional boss there and he is ridiculously difficult, so. Yeah, he's one of the hardest fights in the game. I think Ishin's harder. Uh, I would say depending the Harai State I didn't know hard. about Fang and Blade's cheese, so I'd say Ishin's harder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, maybe in that case. But, okay. I didn't cheese any of the bosses, I just beat them. So yeah, the last bit of that episode is like a little bit boring, I guess. Just emulate what we done. Um, and then this, by doing this just now, it allows you to unlock all the endings in the game. Yeah, so just make sure that you've backed up your save before the Ibo fight, then you can get the Shura ending, get your trophy for that, re-download your save, and then take the other path and continue the game by disagreeing with the Ibo. Yeah. So that way you've got the Shura trophy and you can continue your save because you may need to back it up later on if you want different dialogue choices yeah, for the yeah. Divine Child endings. So you might need to overwrite the backup you've just made. Uh, another so thing is Shura well first, is... then back. Back up, do Shura, and then go back Yeah, is what I'd say. So another thing as well, actually, is um, you want to... Even though this stuff does just technically give you stuff to unlock another ending... Um, you also need to do all this stuff in order to um, get to the, like unlock the last of your upgrades for attack and uh, your health. So it is kind of like optional, but also you kind of also want to just do it. So ten gold squad. Yeah, exactly. If you want to max out all that, you have to do it. Anyway, though, that's it for this part. The next part we are doing. Ashina again. I can't remember what the next part is. I'm pretty sure you said it was Ashina again. Well, whatever it is. We'll catch you in the next part. See you later.